I am interviewing the Israelis as well about this situation and putting the same rigorous, challenging sorts of questions to them about their strategy. But I want to question you about your strategy in Hamas. And well, there is no doubt the yes. international community and human rights groups regard the firing of Qassam rockets into Israeli population centers as criminal, as against all the tenets of international law. Do you accept that? Well, uh, I didn't hear from them that they consider the Israeli attack on the Palestinians as a criminal. This is a hypocritic and double standard way which will not uh, lead to uh, any positive situation. If they want to criticize Hamas, they have to condemn Israel for sending hundreds of records, rockets on the Palestinians. Going back to your question, what I want to say, talking about the mentalities, it's not from one side. Let's talk about the one important basic. Hamas' strategy is to, to let the Israelis believe that the occupation costs them most than anything else. If they want to live in peace, they are supposed to, to end this occupation, to withdraw their troops. This will create the peace. Otherwise, there will be no peace. The only way to create the peace is to leave the Palestinian lands, to withdraw the Israeli troops from the occupied lands. This, is, this was clear from all the Palestinian factions in 2006. We talked in a Palestinian conciliation document. Our national target is to have a complete withdrawal from the, the occupied territories on the borders of the 4th of June, including uh, uh, Jerusalem, dismantling the settlements, having the, the people, M the Mr. refugees, Hamden. back to their homeland. Uh, Mr. Hamden, this I understand. Will create I understand you want to put it in a context, and I think we've heard the context from you already. I want you to address what is happening right now. There are around 700 people who've died in Gaza in the last uh, two weeks or so. We believe from independent reporting 300 or so of them may be women and children who are already dead, and more are dying every day. Given that situation right now, Surely it is incumbent upon you for humanitarian and moral reasons to stop firing those rockets. Well, who will, who will guarantee the Israelis will stop their firing against the Palestinians? Who will guarantee the Israelis will end their occupation? Till now, let me say it frankly. We are talking about a peace process between the Palestinians and the Israelis for 17 years. Till now, there is no recognition for the Palestinian rights from the Israeli side. There is no real definition for the Palestinian rights from the Israeli side. And there is no real commitment from the international community and the Israelis towards this, those rights. I think this is the important point here. The Palestinians had worked hard. Yasser Arafat recognized Israel, but they, they gave him nothing. Yasser Arafat was killed finally by the Israelis. You talk about Yasser Arafat, but of course his own Fatah movement is now fundamentally opposed to what you have done over the last two weeks in Gaza with the beginning of, of the rocket attacks on Israel. To quote the words of Nimr Hamad, an advisor to Mahmoud Abbas, he said a few days ago, he said, Hamas needs to stop shedding the blood of Palestinians lightly. Well, everyone knows that Nimr Hamad is organizing all her, his steps with the Israelis, and he was asked by Abu Mazen to shut his mouth because he was talking in a wrong way. So I will not uh, react I, I'm to that. I'm sorry, but I Mahmoud Abbas, say... Abu Mazen himself, condemned your decision in Hamas to begin the rocket attacks on Israel. Well, he was not telling the right uh, thing, and I think he was saying that on purpose for pleasing the, the Israeli government. Anyway, Mahmoud Abbas will end his period tonight. He will be some Palestinian, and he will not be any more a president. So we will not have any comments on that. So, 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 so to be clear, to be clear, you sit there in Beirut in relative safety as a spokesman for Hamas, and it has to be said, Mr. Haniya and others who are in the leadership in Gaza, they are in their underground bunkers compared to many Gazans in relative safety, because at least they have some protection, and they continue to command their forces to fire the rockets into Israel, knowing that Israel will respond with much greater force, knowing that Palestinian civilians will die as a result, and you are quite comfortable with that, are you? Well, let me tell you that fact. Our people who are the people who are dying there, they are our sons, children, our flesh and blood. 
the people who are dying there, our, they are our soldiers and their families. Our leaders are leading the fight against the Israelis, while some others are, are accepting all the Israelis' conditions. This is the fact on the ground. Ismail Hani is not hiding. He is leading the situation. And everyone knows that the leadership is doing its best to lead the, the, this in, in the best way. Everyone knows that they hide George W. Bush, the president of the biggest and strongest state in the world, after 11th of September attacks on a very far place. It's not, it's not wrong, the leadership, to deal with the, fa with, with, with the battle in a good way. So no one can criticize Hamas for leading the fight against the occupation. I believe the one who is supposed to be criticized, the one who is hiding behind the Israelis, supporting their attack on his own people. Abu Mazen did nothing to protect Gaza. He did nothing to save the Palestinian unity. Abu Mazen was a part of the problem, so he, no one is supposed to talk about him uh, as the one who will save the Palestinians. Isn't, I have to say, isn't the truth, it's not the it, idea wait, wait, of We don't rockets. have so much time, Mr. Hamdan. If I may, I'm going to interrupt you. Isn't the truth that you and Hamas have massively miscalculated this entire strategic choice you made? I'm looking at a, a rally you uh, spoke at in support of Gaza on the 3rd of December, and you drew direct comparisons between the strength of the Hamas resistance in Gaza and what you call the victory of Hezbollah in Lebanon in the summer of 06. But the truth is, Hamas in Gaza does not have the strength, the organization, the infrastructure, and of course the military power that Hezbollah showed in 06 in southern Lebanon. Well, uh, you can talk about the calculation if Hamas made the decision to have the war. The one who started the war is Israel, so the only calculation which we have to do is how to resist this attack, how to resist this invasion. It, not, it wasn't Hamas who attacked Israel. It wasn't Hamas who invaded inside the Israelis' lands. It wasn't Hamas who killed hundreds of, of, of the other side. It's clear that Israel started that, and we are in the position of defending well, ourselves. Well, you know, we could, and go, we could spend the next. Uh, this is one point. We could let, spend the next let, five let minutes till the interview ends talking about who is Excuse responsible me, for starting want, it. I, you know I, that the Israelis yeah, believe you add, were. So there's not much point going into that I, I any further. Add, I, yeah, I want to add one thing more. Uh, uh, no one is comparing the situation in Gaza with the situation in South Lebanon. No one is doing that. But the idea which we are saying. The Israelis will not break down the resistance. They were facing the Palestinian resist resistance for six decades, and they couldn't overcome this resistance. They will not do that with this blood of shit. The, the, the result of this blood of shit, more hatred, more actions against the occupation, more reactions towards the occupation. The Israelis will not say, feel safe after the end of this operation if they continued because <clears throat> this security will not be generated by this way. Well, I'll tell you who doesn't feel safe right now, and that's the people of Gaza. And again, I look at you, another statement you made that same rally in early December when clearly Hamas was preparing for a showdown with Israel. You said Gaza will triumph. We will open the door for the nation to create a new victory, the liberation of the whole of Palestine from the sea to the river. Those words must ring so hollow to the people, the civilians of Gaza right now, facing what they are facing. Well, it seems to me that the, the West are showing his care for the Palestinians. If, if you care about those Palestinians, I, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking for the people who are leading the politics and the countries. If you have this care towards the Palestinians, Stop sending the, 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 the rockets and the missiles, the weapons to Israel. Yeah, but, but what, my point is not. My point is, my point is something else. What is the point of you continuing with this rhetoric of Hamas being the movement that can deliver all of the land of Palestine from the sea to the Jordan River? You know it's nonsense. You know it can't happen. Why not abandon it? Why not recognize the right of Israel to exist and join the peace process? Because that is the only way that Palestinians are ever going to get a state or any sense of security. I think the only nonsense is the occupation. The only nonsense is those advices for the Palestinians to give up. The only nonsense is the peace process which not give the Palestinians nothing. The Palestinians are seeking their rights. They will achieve those rights either in a peaceful way if there was a right work for that or by resisting the occupation.
it's clear no one will gain security and peace with the presence of the occupation.